A real leader is we we look at we look at ourselves first and we fix the things that we need to do first before we go say anything to anybody else. else. For sure. A bad leader is gonna always point the finger first. So stay away from them people because you know they always trying to blame it on somebody, you know what I mean? Bruh, so that was crazy, right? My wife got a call to be in a in a um reality show, basketball wise, right? Yeah. That was crazy, and they you know, I always looked at it like, hell no, yeah. you know, <laughs> you don't want you to business <laughs> and all that kind of crazy shit and I sure. end up being in a damn reality show. That shit was drama fired, boy. Let me tell you, they know how to cook that shit up. But your your wife was in um uh, what was what was it? Uh, Wags. Wags, Wags right? of Miami. So it's called Wives and Athletes of Sport uh, Wives of Sports Athletes. Wives of Sports Miami. Athletes in yeah, Miami. Miami, yeah. So it was Wags. They nicknamed it Wags, I guess. <laughs> it was crazy, man. It's like uh just like you said, people all in your business and shit. Yeah. It's so how was so how was it when um you know, cause I know if my wife got a call and it was like I'm about to, this, I'm like, wait, hold, oh, wait, whoa, whoa. So your wife come, he was like, hey, you know, they, they offered me to be on this reality show. I'm about to do this thing called Wags. What was your reaction, man? What did you say, My man? My reaction at first was no, because it was like, she, it was her and she was best friends with another girl who uh, I played with her husband, Rashad Jones. We were playing for the Dolphins at the time. Yeah. And so... We just, you know, both of us like, dang, man, our business gonna be out in the street and all that. And so at first we was like, nah. Yeah. And then, so they kind of begged us to do it, and we, we was like, yeah, let y'all make y'all a little money, cause they, you know, what I'm saying they wanted to be, you know, make some money. They wanted to be, you know, right, kind of like grow their own brand, yeah, right? grow their own be brand. independent. And so at first it was like, nah, but we we kind of saw the opportunity in it for them to build something from it and. Mm -hmm. It was like, yeah, but at the same time, it's kind of, we're looking like, hey, our business is going to be in the street. They're going to see what I'm doing at home. My mm -hmm. kids' lives going to be public. Right. Yeah, it was crazy. Because you're a private person, right? You I'm, I'm a pretty private person, man. Yeah. I don't do too much. You know, I don't go right. out a lot. Right. You know, put my business out there. But at the end of the day, it was kind of fun, though, you know Yeah, it, it was, was kind of fun, right? Yeah, yeah. Once you kind of let it go, it's like, all yeah, right, yeah. this ain't that bad. They, huh? they were paying for trips. They was paying for vacations, paying yeah. for everything, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Paying money. So it was like, it was cool. We so had a, were you in the show or not? I was on the show. I was a part of the show. Oh, you was a part of the yeah, show? Yeah, I was a part of the show. <laughs> so, like, so you got your, uh, your, your, your reality debut on, huh? Yeah. <laughs> They pay for everything. They pay for my wedding. I did my wedding on the show. They paid for that. Mm -hmm. Bought out the Versace mansion for me. Mm. Did an episode there for a week. Stayed there. It was it was cool. Save some money. Made some money. Made some money. Save some money. <laughs> <laughs> it's a personal question. Sure. In your household, who make who has the say so in the who household? Wear the is, pants? The, is it who wear the pants? Is it the wife <laughs> or you? Who who has the say so? It kind of go back and forth. It, it, kinda kinda depends, back and forth. it depends on what's going on. If, yeah. I, if I'm in the doghouse, yeah. <laughs> she, she, you know what I'm saying, she get to run it. But if it's like, if I'm doing good and, you know, and she getting, she pretty happy, I get to make the decision. Yeah, 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 you know right. how it is, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm asking because I'm trying to figure out, like, a, what, what, what is the best way for a relationship? What is the best uh, situation for marriage? Or is it to let the male lead or to let the woman lead or... You know, how, which way is the best situation? This might sound crazy, but I feel like whoever making the most money should, should, should lead. Who had the final decision. Final you decision. Know whoever got the most experience with finance. There you go, because I was going to say experience. Because just yeah, having the money, you could be a, yeah, yeah. a doofball and yeah, be yeah, rich. Right, you know right, what right. I mean? So the person that got the most wisdom. The and, wisdom with money and to decide. Because at the end of the day, man, I feel like relationships ain't all around money but that's what is you know what i'm saying that that plays a key part in your relationship yeah you know it's, what I'm it's money because you know if you can't pay the bills you can't feed yourself right. somebody else you know they got a problem <laughs> right. you know what i mean like, that's a For big sure. problem you know we got kids and stuff For sure. so so you saying the person that makes the most money and they have to have the person with the most financial experience should have the last say so okay in, in most well, of so what if one person has all the money, 
but the person without the money has the financial experience. What's your take on that? Then that's going to be hard because the person with the money going to feel like, you know, it's my money. I made the money. But if, if he a real leader and real true, you know, a good person or whatever, you're going to have to let that go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, let it go. If, if, especially if you're, if you're, if it's a, I ain't going to say if it's the woman or female, but if that person knows the other person got knowledge about how to make money, how to, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. How to spend money, how, how money works, mm -hmm. then that should be, you should, you should let them make them decisions, them certain decisions. Mm hmm I know that, uh, the households in America go through that and try to, you know, yeah. you know, I think the men are always going in like rah, 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 rah. But you got to kind of figure out who makes the best decisions, you know, who going to. And especially with us, though, because we different. We got more money than the average person. Mm -hmm. So it's going to come. That's that's a big company. And most I feel like I don't know most relationships, but in regular relationships with people who don't have like as much make as much money at the time as we did. Mm -hmm. They have more equal value or say so in a relationship. Yeah. But we like we get all this money and now, you know what I'm saying? We gotta put it to work and you know mm -hmm. have our, our significant other make them happy with it too. You know what I'm saying? They gonna yeah. want to make some decisions too. So, because it seemed like back in the days it was more like the man. No, more like the women. But it seemed because in the '80s and the crack epidemic, crack epidemic. Yeah. It seemed like the women had to come in because the men, or most of women, some women too, most of the men all cracked out in crack house. So they they got to save their family and save their household. You know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah they had some more sense back. You know, yeah, they had some more sense. So it's like, uh, man, you gotta uh, in, in relationships, man, and in life, man, you gotta drop your ego and and figure out who makes the best decision. Period. Just because. Like you say, we got the most money yeah. and all we want to try to make the decision, this and that. That's all ego, man. That's mm -hmm. control. When you're trying to, trying to tell somebody how to do something that you never done just because you got more money or something, that's control. You want to be a control. You want to be a dictator. Man, that ain't, that ain't right. it in life, man. So, uh, you know, always be willing to learn, man. You got to always. Can, you can still be a leader and not, you know what I'm saying, control it. You got to learn when to lead and went to you know what I'm saying step aside that you still the main leader but Boy, that was deep preach yeah, yeah. brother that was it right there. you can still be the leader but you like you say you got to right. know when to control it man yeah, yeah. and um so uh if y'all don't know man this brother ain't never drunk smoked popped the aspirin I mean, it's the only thing he ever did is pop the aspirin or something you know what yeah. I mean so uh I always try to come in I always try to peer pressure him too you know have a drink with me, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, sneak him over here. He not not see. I hey, ah, nah. yeah. So, so that discipline, man. How how did you come about into that discipline and through your life? The peer pressure. How did you avoid that? Cause me and my brothers and stuff, we was getting drunk and stuff since middle school. Yeah, that's <laughs> how my friends were. But the thing with me, man, I was like, I was a little, a little weird little boy. You know what I'm saying? Growing up, so all my friends, we was all cool and stuff, but. It's like when they go out, they do something. I want to do the exact opposite. You know, mm. I used to like outcast. I used you to like be different. Be different. I just want to be different. Mm. And at first, it started like that. It started like, oh, y'all gonna go, y'all gonna wear uh, the team basketball shoes. I'm gonna wear these. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna mm. wear this. Or y'all gonna all wear black. I'm gonna wear red. You know what I'm saying? But then it's like they started drinking. It wasn't even because I ain't want to get in trouble or nothing. It's like you know what. Y'all going to drink, you know, I'm just going to stay on the girls, you know what I'm saying? Oh, While y'all, you know what I'm saying, getting drunk, I'm going to holler at the girls. But then you got one homeboy like, man, this going to get the girls lit. Yeah, I'd be like, I, I, I actually used to fake it. <laughs> <laughs> so what you put in, what you used nah, to put in? So even in college, though, my homeboy Sam, he, he took his first drink in college. It was at a frat house. It was our freshman year. So as soon as he drunk it. He threw up all over the place. It was like, because it was his first drink. And he was like, man. So he kept, he tried and stuff, trying different stuff. And so it was all the girls around trying to get us a drink. So I had went to the bathroom and got some water. And I had a little, they had little shot glasses and stuff. I put water in my little shot glass and do like this and swallow. And sometimes it'll be a, like, it'll shot, it'll be a shot. I take it, I pour it on the floor. Yeah. Like I'm drinking. <laughs> and the girls used to think I was drunk. And, you know. <laughs> 
He was, was pulling wild vet, college days. vet drinking <laughs> alcohol moves without being a vet drinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You knew the point over your show. Like, we be doing that when we have too many drinks at the club and people want to sure. keep shot at the shot. Right. We go right to that side. My, my homeboy Sam used to be my wingman. He, like, even in college, we'd go to the clubs and stuff. See, back in Atlanta, I, it, it, the club scene was crazy when I was in college. So he'll order the shots, but he'll tell the bartender to get me the water shots. <laughs> so pour some water shots. Right. And they'll do it, and then he'll just give me the water. Right. That's how, I used That's to how you rock. That's yeah. how you rock. Everybody know. Everybody down with it. Right. Yeah. But everybody think you're getting lit, too. Well, the girls that we didn't know, you know what I'm saying? The new girl, they thought, you know what I'm saying, I was drinking, but all my boys knew I wasn't drinking. <laughs> did, I, you I ever, just, did you ever, like, play like you was drunk sometime? Man, I did that one time. <laughs> <laughs> tell us, tell us, tell us I did like that one time, drunk. man. It was, uh, we was at, 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 our, at our, our dorm room was like apartments at Georgia Tech in Atlanta. So it was like apartments or whatever. So we had a little party, whatever. So it was this one girl that I liked. Uh, her name was Deborah. So my homeboy Sam, he used to he uh, filled up the uh, shots. No, this at this time he was he was pouring them, but I was just pouring them on the floor. I pour them in the sink, and then I, like I come back. It was the sink was right there in the kitchen, whatever. So I, I act like I'm drinking it, and then. They was like, dang, Phil, you, you hold your liquor. <laughs> I was like, damn, I got to start acting drunk or something. I got to do something. So I'm like, so I tell my dog, I was like, bro, I'm about to act crazy. Dog. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? Just watch out. You know what I'm saying? So I'm drinking. I'm doing the I'm fake drinking, pouring in the sink. I'm just stumbling over stuff, like <laughs> touching on a <the> girl. <laughs> Mumbling, trying to uh, yeah, mumble yeah. your words. Yeah. I was, I don't know what I was doing. I was just acting <laughs> foolish, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, man. So, so that's your story, is making it, maneuvering yeah. through life without drinking and dealing with the yeah. peer pressure. So I ain't drink, man. I ain't smoke weed, man. I ain't do nothing. And I ain't, I ain't had nothing against it. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, right. all my, my family drink, you know what I'm saying? My brother smoke weed. I don't got nothing against it. It's legal some places. Right. Some people say it's beneficial to your health. And you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't got nothing against it. I just, it just went for me, man. It I just always wanted to be different. And then growing up, when I was starting to uh, get into getting more serious about football, I was like, man, some of my friends used to be drunk and crazy, and not crazy, but get drunk, crazy drunk, and then go to practice the next day <laughs> and like ball out, you know what I'm saying? And you used or, to look at like, how, like how you do that, you know what I'm saying? And I just, like, I just, didn't want to, didn't want to try it. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I don't think I could have did that. Yeah. Yeah. So you think you're going to, you know, we all got to leave this earth one day. You know what I mean? Hopefully it ain't <laughs> no time soon. So you think you're going to die never trying to drink a smoke or anything, popping the aspirin in your life? <laughs> Man, I, I like, I, I juice, right? So I got a juice bar, right? Mm -hmm. Raw juice. And, uh, if ever the day they come to where they juicing weed, <laughs> which I doubt, I might try it in. But, but what um, about a little alcohol in the juice? Nah, I'm good on that. <laughs> I'm, I done made it this far, bro. I'm, I done made it in my, in my 30s this far. You know what I'm saying? But what, if, well what, 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 if, what, if, what if everybody tell you, man, you missing out on something, man. Go try it. You and your yeah. wife. I go out, my, just get I, drunk. Just, I got my go vices. Try. I got my vices, man. I play poker, man. I get calm. <laughs> I uh, I play, I play video games, bro. That's what I do. That's your vices, huh? That's my vice. So if y'all don't, if y'all want to go through living a life, perfect life, y'all look up <laughs> it ain't Phil perfect Willis. Life, meaning but perfect with health. It, yeah, maybe. perfect healthily. You know what I mean? <laughs> your system is just pure clean, baby. Go look up Phil Willis, baby. He'll tell you. How to stay mentally strong, you know what I mean? For sure, for sure. <laughs> so, uh, oh, man. oh man, no drinking, none of that, whole life. Yeah, yeah. And it's crazy because my my uh, my my mom, she she not alcoholic or nothing, but she drink. You know what I'm saying? I grew up around family that drink. My brother drink. So I mean, and they drink responsibly. So, and I ain't got nothing against it. Like I said, I just, it just want to put. That's me. strong, like the discipline, like that. Yeah. That's wild, bro. That's, you say your mama grew up. I mean, your mama drank. Everybody around you drank. You just had something. You say I'm gonna be different, and you stuck to it, boy. Stuck to it. And hey, that's what life is about, man. Making sacrifices and sticking to it. Sure. You did that. So you say you got this. Uh, 
his company, Raw Juicer. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, a part, I'm a partner to the to the, uh, the franchise. Yeah, to the yeah, franchise. Yeah, yeah. But tell us about that Raw Juicer a little bit. What that what that consists of? So it's a, um, a juice bar that serves acai bowls, organic cold pressed juices, and um, everything there is is raw, meaning um, non processed. So it's not heated up like the juices you buy in the store that have mm. that long shelf life mm, yeah. with the preservatives and all that. It's a more healthy, healthy option. And fresher. Fresh, fresher. healthy. Mm. It's, it's juiced daily. So it's like it's, it's, it's more healthy than a, a drink you would buy yeah. in the store. No preservatives, all natural. All natural, no preservatives, no added sugar, sugar no additives. Mm -hmm. you know? And we got, we got like 11 locations in South Florida. Uh, you got one in Brickell. You got one in Aventura, you got one in Pembroke Pines, Weston, Fort Lauderdale, and throughout uh, South Florida. Mm. Raw juice. Raw juice. Mm -hmm. R A W J U C E. Mm -hmm. Okay, lead, like leadership, right? All right, so we'll be back to the leadership. But on the leadership part, communicating. How big are you on communicating or making sure, you know, just communicate? That's big. That's one of the things uh, when we're talking about the money or whatever, communicating it is, is key too, man. Um, I was talking to my wife, man. We, we need to communicate more, you know what I'm saying? Or or you mean leadership and communicating with anybody, but not just Yeah, just because that's a part of it. If you're yeah. a leader, you got to be able to communicate. Yeah, that's big, yeah. man. That's big, man, because you can be a good leader and have a good heart and trying to lead whoever you're trying to lead or what you're trying to lead. And if you don't convey your message the right way mm -hmm. to the people that you're leading or whatever you're leading, they're going to look at you as like, why, why I got to follow him? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Just communicate it well, you know? Or if you don't, like you say, what you're trying to lead and we see that you're leading us the wrong way or you don't know what you're doing as a leader, that's going to really throw, throw everything off too. You know what I mean? So you got you to gotta know how to communicate to to be a good leader, you know, yeah, that's, I think so. Cute. You know what I mean. That's one of the main things in being a that's leader. That's one of the main things. And communication, yeah. it's it's not hard. I don't know why the world makes it so <laughs> hard, I mean, it, man. It, it, it ain't not not hard. I mean, it's kind of hard because you know you might have a view on something and somebody might not understand it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying it, it's right, not, it can't but be done, if, but it ain't easy though. You right. Know? But if you do, if you have a view on something and somebody don't understand it, then I'm communicating it to you and we talk about it and I understand that you under, understand and then we deal with how we don't understand yeah. it. But it might be a way to, the way you communicating, they might not, they might feel like you, you disrespectful or something like, like, you know how women, yeah, Man, they, I shouldn't say women because yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, but some like say some humans are sensitive. Say <laughs> say more women than any. <laughs> for instance, say you have a situation where your woman or a woman is cooking for some your kids or some some just 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 hypothetical, mm -hmm. and the food they is not as good as you want it or it ain't as healthy as you want it. But if you go to your woman and tell them. How that's gonna come out? <laughs> you communicating it though, right? But no, I have, yeah, you, you communicating. You're right, but like you say, that's a part of being a leader. Cause I have a hard time with that. I know what you're talking about exactly. With the hard problem with it, that is constructive criticism. Yeah. So as a leader, when I tell you this, I'm gonna make you understand. Listen, this is constructive criticism. Right. If you can't take constructive criticism, all of this is ain't none of this ain't gonna work. Right. Cause at the end of the day, we all here to get better and better and better. And the only way you can get better is I gotta constructive criticize you. You gotta constructive criticize me, and I gotta take that to know to get better at something or do, you know, everything to fit in. So when you say the food is not that good, it's like, baby, I, I appreciate <laughs> you. I know you're doing right, it. right. But baby, just cook it a little longer. Maybe put a little more seasoning on it and that. Don't you get mad at me. Don't, but, don't, but don't good. do it. I see it. <laughs> don't, don't do it. It's constructive criticism. Now relax. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, like you're saying, we, we go through that, man. But you uh, communicate it though. Yeah. It's, you know what I'm saying? Just sometimes. But like you say, you, you got to know how to say it, how to fit it in, when to say it, how to smooth it in. But you know, that's, that's a part of it. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's what makes the good leaders, to separate the good leaders from the from the bad leaders, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or not necessarily yeah, bad. Just the good leaders. Yeah, man. just yeah. the good leaders. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. What you think about the uh, 
Russell Wilson situation, man. I was talking to somebody else about that, man. Just the whole sideline leadership looks like he's trying to force something, you know. Just pass, run, tell everybody to do all that. Cause I know how I looked at it. Like, bro, get your ass out yeah, my yeah, face, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? But tell me what you think, man. If that was your quarterback on your team. I mean, he he's a a natural natural leader. He's been in a leader role because he's a quarterback for this for years. So with his situation, I mean, he's expected to lead in a certain way. You know what I'm saying, vocally and you know uh, on the field. So I just feel like if they was if he was doing playing better, mm-hmm. he could be his yeah. vocalism would be taken. Better, no, you know better. what I'm saying? If he was playing better, but at the time he ain't playing as well. So you're looking at him being vocal, like get out of the way. You know what I'm saying? You ain't playing like that. But like, yeah, like, like you're saying, like yeah, I hear you. You being a leader, but if he's playing better, he don't go on the sideline, run past everybody. When I I need y'all to say run when they run and, and pass when they pass. If he's if he's if playing he better, like that, he wouldn't even be saying that. So that's where you see you see that. <laughs> Something ain't right is what he's trying to do. And, bro, don't come over here talking about damn team, my defense, talking about run pass. But go sit over there with your motherfucking offense and right. get your shit together yeah. before I slap five right, from you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's don't even pull that shit. It seems like he's trying to throw it off somewhere else. Right. But a real leader is we, exactly. we, look at, we look at ourselves first and we fix the things that we need to do first before we go say anything to anybody yeah, else. For sure. A bad leader is going to always point the finger first. So stay away from them people because... You know, they're always trying to blame it on somebody, right, you know right. what I mean? Yeah, and I see what you're saying. It's like he, he deflecting from his play and saying, like, and bringing attention to this, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, I feel you on that. Like, that shit doesn't even feel right. Like, <laughs> run past, like, I don't even say that anyway. Like, right, right. That ain't nothing. That that ain't, yeah, yeah. We ain't practice that. We, ain't, we don't practice that. We don't do that. Like, how sure. about when y'all run the ball and pass the ball, I say, block! Yeah, block! How, about, how about y'all make a play? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? How do, how, what about how, how, how we handling the kids? and who, who, How do we come up with the roles in the household of who's taking the kids to school, who's doing the homework, who's doing the special activities? You know what I mean? How do we come up with those roles, you know? With me, man, I guess I would say my wife got lucky because I, I love doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, with the kids. Right. Like, I got two boys, two bad boys, and uh-huh. they're just crazy, and I like it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I'm always, I'm, I always want to be with them. Uh-huh. And I don't want them up under their mother all the time. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're right. So if it was, uh, if I had girls, it might be a little different. Right. But I'm always with my kids. I'm always taking them places. I'm always at football practice. Mm-hmm. I'm always with them with their homework. With they, you know what I'm saying? With their schoolwork and all that. Cause mm-hmm. even though I just like spending as much time as with, I, I want them to spend as much time with a man as possible. You know what I'm saying? That's important. That's important. I want them to know how to be a man, you know? But, that, you know, that's funny because it's different because uh, um, my perspective is the wife, the girl, go take the kids, do everything where the man got to go mm-hmm. provide and this and that because, right, right. you know, I see my mama, she did everything for me. She took me everywhere. Yeah. I mean, absolutely everything. So, um, but I had to learn that, you know, because it was new to her. So I had to join in and, and we had to do this together, yeah. you know what I mean, as a team, whereas I couldn't just be, out running and about, running and about, you know, running around and stuff. So I had to bring that leadership role over here and, yeah. and tighten it up a little bit, you know what for I mean? Sure, for sure. Yeah, that's what it's about, man, them kids, man. And mm-hmm. So what about communicating with the kids? How hard is that? Oh, that's crazy because <laughs> they don't understand, you know what I'm saying? They only, I got young kids, so you got older kids, so some of your older kids probably understand a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But I got eight-year-old and a four-year-old. They don't understand why they can't have it right now. Yeah. <laughs> why they can't have it right now. But why? You know, Cause it ain't time for that. You know what I'm saying? So, so patience is. Yeah, yeah, patience. You gotta be patient with them, and try not to spank them all day. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Cause go to jail for that. Man. Right. <laughs> First of all. And that don't necessarily don't mean help. it's gonna it get help. through to right. them. It don't know? help. You know what I'm saying? So. Right. You gotta talk to them and be patient with them. What's your crazy situation you had with the kids or wife? Where it's like you had to. I had to go crazy. Dang, with the uh, with the kids, just my kids, they don't know when to stop. Like when to like uh, out in public, you know what I'm saying? Like when, I seen you at the field the other day. It was like, come on, boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Matter of <laughs> fact, yeah. I saw you at my son. You was uh, 
my son had a football game and you was up on the running on the field with your family. So yeah, I had a well I had a situation with my oldest son. He ate right, so he getting big, right? So mm -hmm. he think he can fight or whatever. He, he think he can fight me back or whatever sometimes. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? Um, it was probably like a couple of weeks ago. It's like I, you don't want to like punish them in public, and you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying. You want to be. You don't want to make a scene, so I'm like telling him to do something. He won't do it. He walking away, getting mm -hmm. mad and stuff. I'm like, on the motherfucker, boy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but you can't yeah. snatch him up. You know what I'm saying? Because so, they call the police, yeah, boy. Yeah, Especially so, when you're growing up in the in the suburbs. Right over where we right. at. You know? you grew up in the. Um, I grew up in the in the in the hood area in, in the, the hood, more yeah. urban area. You right. know what I'm saying not nothing like. Too like, hoodish, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, yeah. that's a challenge too, man. And I'd like to talk about with uh people too, um, you know, growing up in the hood versus growing up in the suburbs. And then, you know, you grew up in the hood. Now you got to teach your kids how to live in the suburbs, but you want them to have the mentality same, same you thing. had in the yeah. hood. You know, and it's that's like, a, It's like you work hard so your kids can have better. And, and once they have better, you look at them work? like, hold on, you need to experience no, you need some to of this stuff. Right. Like, man. <laughs> so it's like, man, yeah. you know what I mean? So I think that's something we always Crazy. deal with too, man. Yeah. We're trying to figure that out. Um, I, I think I kind of, I had, I don't know if it's I figured it out or if my daughter figured it out because <laughs> it was tough at first. You know? But I think she's a natural neighborhood hood girl. Like all yeah. her friends, everybody she picks, she just, yeah, yeah. she's just a, a humble person. Like she ain't picking no type of friends, it gotta be this, gotta be that. She just like who she like. And every party she go to, it be in the hood. Yeah. I gotta drop off <laughs> right in my hood. Like, oh my Lord, yeah. my daughter. Right. Who you got for the Super Bowl, man? What you think, man? Who you think will win the Super Bowl? Shoot, I got favorite teams, man. I, I'm so favorite? surprised at Philly this year, bro. I'm surprised. I didn't know Jalen Hurts was gonna be this good. Right, right. My favorite players are, uh, uh, he ain't doing too well right now, though. Um, Derrick Henry, they not doing that yeah, well. Doing, yeah. And then Lamar Jackson. They, they, yeah, yeah. I, they, I, yeah, so I, you, you want I, Baltimore, but, Tennessee, I your favorite players? I don't know about what teams, but them are my favorite players right now. That's who I like to watch. Team, I want, I want the Dolphins, man. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm, It'll I'm, be lit, boy. We Dolphins get the Dolphins. The Falcons. I play for the Falcons. Mm -hmm. I play for the Dolphins. I'm from Georgia. I live in Florida. So, yeah. But, you know, is it realistic? <laughs> well, it was before. It well, was tour. Yeah, it's still he coming, he back. coming back. So Do you yeah, believe in tour? I started to this this beginning of this season. I mm -hmm. really started to. <laughs> started but what? To. But what? He got hurt. He got hurt. Been, you know, so when he come years. back, do you believe him? You think? You know, he... I don't know. We're gonna see. Oh, you still I'm, developing I'm your belief? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm rooting for him. Yeah, see you're rooting for him. Rooting for the. Uh, see, I. I'm I'm all split up everywhere, bro. I'm like I'm all, I'm on this team, that team, like I, you know what I'm saying. I'm rooting for everybody right now. I'm all messed up. Yeah, you all messed yeah, up. Yeah, that's what happened when you play for like four or five teams, right. and you still. I'm not far removed from the NFL. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I still know some players that I played with on the Falcons, right? On the uh, Dolphins. So mm -hmm. it's like I'm all. I don't got no team, bro. You got no team. But if you want somebody to win the Super Bowl, you want the Dolphins to win. I don't know, but either the Dolphins or the Falcons. Dolphins or the Falcons. Which is don't seem realistic, but you know. <laughs> let's go Dolphins, man. Win. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. You you can you can get to the Super Bowl, but you can't beat my Eagles. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, man, the art of interception. Say what needs to be said. Salute to y'all tuning in. We out, baby.